Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Inshallah, today we'll continue with chapter 3. Chapter 3 is about uh, rational exponents. Or in other words, when the exponents are fractions, uh, rational exponents and uh, 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 radical equations. Radical equations and functions. Uh, when we say ra uh, rational exponents, we mean exponents that are like fractions like this, which uh, is leads to radical uh, equations because uh, like there's the third root of x minus 3. This is actually a uh, rational exponent, x uh, minus 3 to the 1 third. These are equivalent expressions. So. Uh, that's why this chapter is about rational exponents, ra uh, radical equations, and functions. Uh, um, so uh, that's what we're going to talk about in this chapter. So previously, we have, I have uh, uh, shared with you some preliminary uh, uh, concepts regarding radical exponents. Today, I'm going to continue with that, um, uh, and, and next time, shall we'll go on with radical functions and equations. So more on rational expressions, inshallah. So um, I have talked about uh, last time what this means, a over m over n. So uh, this can be rewritten as the nth root of a to the m or the nth root of a, all of that to the exponent of m. So uh, these are all of these are equivalent expressions. So if I have, for example, uh, 8 to the uh, exponent of 2 thirds, Okay, this can be rewritten as a third root of 8 squared, or it can be rewritten, rewritten as third root of 8 squared, like that. So, this is the root that goes over here. As is, you know, this, I haven't made an analogy before. Like This is like the roots of a tree, and then, you know, this is like the tree on, you know, like on, on the top. So, root actually is on the bottom. So... Uh, that goes over here, and typically uh, when we say square root, like you know, square root of 25, there is a 2 over here that we ordinarily do not write. So square root of 25 is 5, right? And that actually comes from 25 to the exponent of 1 half like that, okay? So when we uh, previously we wrote the square root, we did not write it like that. Um, now, before we go on, I just wanted to uh, remind us our, ourselves what that means. When we say the cube root of 8 means what number multiplied by itself 3 times uh, will give you 8. 2 times 2 times 2, for example. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So the cube root of 8 is, uh, is 2. Just like the square root of 25 is 5, this meaning what number multiplied by itself 2 times we give you uh, 25 uh, cube root means what multi number multiplied by itself three times uh, we give you 20 uh, we give you eight so the cube root of eight okay okay this is like two times two times two right and that is two okay when you say cube root therefore every time you have like three of them buddies in, inside the root you can bring them out as one okay Whereas for a square root, a square root of 25, for example, is 5 times 5. Every time you have a, a pair, two of them inside, you can take out as 1, as like 5. So therefore, the cube root of x to the fifth, okay, this would be, so this is x cubed times x squared, right? So this will come out as 1, okay, and then the x squared will remain. So x times the cube root of x squared. So this will simplify as uh, as this, because every every uh, three of them will, will come out as one as a cube root, and there will be two remaining inside like that. Okay. So the first thing we appreciated was what does it mean to take a certain root like this? Okay. Um, one more thing before I, I uh, outline for you some rules of uh, uh, exponents like this is this. Okay, um, the cube root of 8 is 2, we said. 
Now, if I had you said before, the square root of 25 is 5, right? And I said, what's the square root of negative 25? Well, it's an imaginary number. Uh, outside of imaginary number, this is undefined, right? So uh, you would say 5, right? But before, you can't take the square root of a negative number in, in real, uh, real numbers, right? Uh, on the other hand, uh, look at this. Cube root of negative 8. Okay, cube root of negative 8. Okay, you can take this because the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, okay, is negative 8. Okay, so you can take a cube root of negative numbers. In fact, you can take the fifth root of negative numbers. Okay. Uh, you can take seventh root of negative numbers, okay, and you can take ninth root of negative numbers. You can do so. In other words, you can take odd roots of negative numbers, and that's okay. So, for example, let's let's do this. Let's try to figure out the ninth root of negative eight. Okay, so here is negative eight. So negative eight. Okay, I'm going to put that to the ninth root, which means 1 over 9. See? You can do it. Okay? So, you can take uh, the nth root of negative numbers if n is odd. So, when n is an odd number, okay, if it is odd, it can be negative or positive number. But if n is even, it has to be a positive number. You, uh, you can't take an even root of a uh, negative number. I hope that's that's, uh, that's appreciated. Um, for example, the fourth root of negative eight is not defined. Okay, that's the uh, not defined. Whereas the fifth root of negative eight is defined. So let's do that. So negative eight. So this is the fifth root of that. All right. So now let's take negative eight. And let's take that, the fourth root of that, which is 1 divided by 4. See? It's not defined. So uh, that's very important. Uh, not defined. I'm sorry, uh, yes, the fifth root of number is, is, is defined. Like it's in some number. So I uh, can't do that. With this, uh, and that's okay. So uh, as a summary, then, the uh, nth root of some number a is defined if it is positive or a negative number, if n is an odd number, and if n is an even number, it has to be a positive number. Okay, so that's that. Now, previously when we were talking about exponential functions and exponents in general, we laid out some rules for exponents. For example, a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n, right? I mean, for example, before we said x to the uh, uh, fifth times x cubed is x to the eighth. Okay, that's like x x x x x five times and three times and x to the eighth. Now, this same rules also applies to fractional exponents, such as x to the uh, one fourth plus sorry x to the one fourth times x to the uh, uh, 5 fourths, for example, will be x to the 6 fourths. You just add them up, and you can simplify this as x to the 3 over 2, like this. So all the rules that we previously laid out for uh, exponent, exponents will also apply to uh, uh, fractional exponents, rational exponents. For example, we said a, this. And we have also said um, a to the m to the power n equals what? Very good. A to the m times n. I'm pretty sure we got that in sure. And then we said a to the m uh, over a to the n is a to the m minus n. Right? You subtract them to That also applies to uh, rational functions. For example, x to the 1 fourth over x to the 5 fourths. Okay, so this would be x to the 1 fourth minus 5 fourths, like this. Okay, 
So this would be x to the minus 4 over 4, which is x to the minus 1, which is 1 over x. Okay, so that rules applies to rash uh, to rational exponents. So here, let me just re uh, enumerate these rules to you again. So a to the m times a a to the n is a to the m plus n. Very good. And then we have a to the m to the n is a to the m times n. A to the m over a to the n is a to the m minus n, correct? And then we had a couple other rules. We had a times b to the m equals a to the m times b to the m. So you can distribute the exponents, so to speak, to a and b. And you can also do this if the exponent is a fraction. Okay, same thing like this, a over b to the m, you can distribute the m to the numerator and uh, and the denominator, like this, okay? Um, and uh, a to the zero is one. Now, an extrapolation of this, watch this, a times b to the m equals, excuse me, this is a to the n times b to the m, right? So uh, this means if I have like, for example, x squared times y cubed, okay, both to the one-fifth, I can distribute the one-fifth to both variables like that. So I get x to the two times one-fifth times y to the third times one-fifth like this, okay? So this will simplify as x to the 2 fifth times uh, y to the 3 fifths like this. Now, this also means that if I have like n to the square root of a times b, okay, now because this is simply a times b to the 1 over n, right? Because a, and then you distribute this, you get now, uh, this is another way of writing this. So if you have something like this, just like you would distribute this over here, this would become, so, so the nth root of a times b becomes the nth root of a times the nth root of b. Let me rewrite this, okay? So in other words, cube root of uh, a times b will be equal to cube root of a times the cube root of be like this. You can open it up. Okay. The vice versa too. If you have the fifth root, let me use it even this time. The fourth root of A times the fourth root of B is going to equal to the fourth root of A times B. So you can like separate it and bring them together. This is just a different way of writing A times B to the M equals a to the n times b to the m. In this case, m is just a fraction, and that's what really this is. Okay. All right. So, uh, in the same way before, we, if we had like the square root of 25 over 16, you simplified this as square root of 25 over square root of 16, and this was 5 over 4. Okay. We can do the same thing if this was a fraction. So the cube root of 25 over 16 would equal to the cube root of 25 over cube root of 16, like this, and then you would do it that way, okay? So in other words, if you have the nth root of a fraction, a over b, you can rewrite this as nth root of a over nth root of b, okay? So this is just review of some uh, properties of fractions. Now I'm going to review this one more time uh, before uh, I will go on and do some um, examples. Okay, so these properties apply to any exponents. Uh, previously, there were uh, uh, integer exponents. In this chapter, they are uh, rational exponents, fraction, fractions. Okay, so whether m and m and m and n in, uh, are fractions or are, are integers, this still works. Okay, this is the point of this chapter. Um, so a to the n times n, uh, a to the n is a to the m plus n, a to the m to the exponent of n, this is called the power of 
to a power of power. This is a to the m times n. And then if you have a to the m uh, over a to the n, this is a to the m minus n. So this will hold true even if the m and n are fractions. a times b to the m is a to the m times b to the m. Okay. Um, and uh, a over b to the m equals uh, a to the m over b to the m. Okay. Uh, so this is true even if this was a fraction. So if this was like one third, this would be cube root of cube root of a and cube root of b. So from from this you get like you get this. The nth root of a times b is the nth root of a times the nth root of b. Okay. And from this, okay, you get that nth root of a over b is the same thing as nth root of a over the nth root of b. So these rules are very important. You should be familiar with these rules, okay? Uh, just write these out like two times or something like that, so at least you're comfortable writing these rules. Uh, because it's, it's important to be familiar uh, with writing these rules, inshallah. Okay, now I'm going to do some examples. Let's do this. Um, cube root of, I'm going to start slow, 135. Okay, what's the cube root of 135? So cube root of 135, what number multiplied by itself gives you 135? But if you do it in a calculator, see, so you go, 135, okay, now cube root is, is going to be the same thing as uh, one third. It's a rational number, okay? So there's no nice and neat number. Then you say, well, you want to write it as the simplest radical form. So you want to write this as a simplest radical form, okay? For example, if I gave you square root of 50, you would say this is 25 times 2, okay? then this will simplify as 5 times square root of 2. So this is the simplest form of this radical. That's what we want to do. We want to simplify this. Okay, well, uh, there's, this is a rational number, but let's see if I could divide 135 by, let's divide 135 by 5. Let's see. If you do that, you get 27. So 135 is... Twenty-seven times five. Okay. Now then, to the see the cube root of twenty-seven is three. Three times three times three is nine. Nine times three is twenty-seven. So the cube root of twenty-seven is three. Okay. So you can bring this out okay, as a three. And then what's left over inside is the five. Okay. So this is how you simplify expressions like that. All right. Um, so um, let's do this one. What's the cube root of 16? What number multiplied by itself gives you, three times gives you 16? Well, uh, it's not going to be a nice and neat number because if you do 16, Okay, uh, 166. So 16 to the exponent of one third is irrational. So it's, it's the cube root of 16 is, is not a nice, neat number. Well, but you do know 16 is 2 times 2. Let me write it this way 16 is um, 8 times 2, right? 8 is 2 cubed, see? 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. So this is a perfect you know, cube, so to speak. So you can bring out the 8 as a 2, and then what remains inside is that 2. Okay? So cube root of 16 is 2 times the cube root of 2. So this is the simplest radical form of that. All right, now watch this. Cube root of negative 16, all right? So that's going to be like negative 2 
uh, it's going to be like this. Okay, uh, it's going to be negative two times negative two times negative two, right? Times two. Okay, so you can take these out as negative two. Okay, and then the cube root of two, like that. So you you can take uh, uh, n uh, roots of when uh, uh, n negative numbers if the n is odd uh, for uh, odd roots. Okay. All right. So let's do some more examples. This is from your textbook, uh, page one seventy five. If you want to follow, let's do this one. Uh, example number six. So what's the cube root of sixty four? y to the sixth okay now cube root of 64 okay this is 4 times 4 times 4 because 4 times 4 is 16 16 times 232 times 64 so 4 times 4 is 16 16 times 4 is 64 okay so the cube root of 64 is 4 okay and then let's write the let's see radical form okay Sorry. so cube root of 64 is 4 now y okay this to the sixth is y uh, squared times y squared times y squared see correct so this is this thing this time this one and, and you can take one of these uh, these three out as as one so this would be y squared. Okay, so the cube root of 64 y to the sixth will simplify as 4 times y squared. Okay, let's do another example. Now this one is 27 p cubed q to the exponent 12 all to the exponent of one third okay now here i'm going to use this property a to the uh, uh, a b to the m equals a to the n times b to the m like that you can distribute the exponent like like that that's what i'm going to do so here then i'm going to distribute the one third to 27 to the p cubed and q to the 12th like this so i have 27 to one third okay then i have p third to one third then i have q to the 12th to one third okay this means cube root of 27 okay now that's outside of separate. See? This simplifies to p to the one because three times one third. These two multiply. That's this rule: a to the m to the n equals a m times n. And this simplifies to q to the fourth because these multiply out. Three goes in there one time. Three goes in there four times. Right? Now the cube root of 27, 3 times 3 is 3, uh, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27. So cube root of 27 is 3. This is p to the first and q to the fourth. Okay. So this simplifies to, to that. You just, all right. Let's do another example then. M to the fourth over n to the eighth. Now you're taking the fourth root of all of this. Okay, so you're taking the fourth root. So if you had the square root of 25 over 16, you could do square root of 25 over square root of uh, 16. Okay, uh, we're going to do the same thing over here. So this is going to be the fourth root of m to the four 
over the fourth root of n to the eighth. Okay. The fourth root of m to the fourth is going to be, yeah, I'm just going to assume m over the eighth root of n to the eighth, or the fourth root of n to the eighth, this is n to the fourth times n to the fourth. Okay. It's going to be, so I'm sorry, this is, um, yeah, n to the fourth. What number multiplied by itself four times? So n squared times n squared times n squared times n squared is n to the, the fourth root. So it's going to be n squared. Okay. So the fourth root of uh, n to the eighth is n squared. Okay, like this. So the answer here is uh, m over n squared, like this. Okay. Uh, one more example of this kind. 14 x y to the exponent of one third over 2 times x to the exponent of 3 fourths z to the negative 6. That's 3 fourths. So, uh, first, I I want to bring to your attention this one third belongs to the y. It doesn't belong to dx because it's not like this, okay? So that one third only belongs to the y. Okay. So we are to simplify this. Okay. Um, I, you can just simplify the uh, co uh, coefficients. Two goes in there one time. Two goes in there seven times. So that becomes seven. Okay. Now this becomes x to the one minus three fourths. Subtract that's a to the m over a to the n equals a to the m minus n, right? That's the x now. y just remains y to the one third. And z is a negative exponent, and so there's no z on the top, right? So you just bring the z up over here. That becomes z to the sixth. Now, this is 7 times x, so 1 fourth minus 3 fourths make the denominator the same like this so 4 or 4 4 minus 3 is 1 so this becomes 1 fourth and then y to the 1 third z to the sixth okay so we leave it like that if you were to convert this into radicals if you wanted but that's that's what you want to leave the answer at because that's it's a simplified they didn't say put in a radical form or anything you could rewrite this as the fourth root of x times the third root of y times z6 okay. now notice you can't combine these yeah because these are different roots if these are both the same roots you could put them under the same umbrella but they are not they're different roots you can't combine those okay all right. So um, I'm going to do one last example here, inshallah, before we end, uh, and that's uh, this example number seven, the fifth root of four times a to the eighth, b to the fourteenth, c to the fifth. Okay. So, all right. So, now, uh, this is the fifth root. If 4 is stuck in there, it's, there's, it's not going to be a rational number. So, so it's going to be the fifth root. The 4 is kind of stuck in there, so 4 remains inside. So, a to the 8th is a to the 5th times a to the 3rd, right? So, this can come out as 1, 1a. One a, correct? That's right, neither a, a, and then what remains inside is three a's, a cubed. Perhaps I should be consistent. A cubed, and then we have b to the fourteenth. So the b to the fourteenth c is b to the tenth times b to the fourth. Okay. So b to the tenth will come out as like b to the five, b to the five, as b, as b to the five, b to the five, right? 
So this can come out as b squared. See, every five of them will come out as one for fifth root. Okay, if you had every four, if you're taking fourth root, every four will come out as one. Okay, okay. so uh, the fifth root of b to the tenth is b squared. But there are four b's left inside. So there's b to the fourth. And c, c to the fifth, fifth root of c to the fifth is just c. c comes out. There's no c under the radical. So all of this will simplify to that. Oh, I should rectangle it like this. Okay. So uh, today uh, what we did was um, uh, we learned uh, how to use the properties of uh, rational exponents in this in this chapter we did um, uh, radical uh, exponents. I just also want to bring to your attention one thing that is not to be confused. If I gave you this, okay, uh, 2 to the 5th root of 3 plus 5 to the uh, uh, 7 to the 5th root of 3, this simplifies to, yes, 9 5th root of 3. You can add these two, just like if I had said, uh, 3 times square root of 2 plus 7 times square root of 2, that would be 10 times square root of 2. 7, 8, 9, 10 square root of 2. So uh, that's, that's just adding and subtracting um, um, uh, radicals. Okay. Uh, inshallah, next time um, I shall talk about uh, uh, radical functions uh, and uh, radical equations. Um, until next time then uh assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum